Hello, welcome to Bible Study. We've been talking about biblical answers to stress. So many things happen in our lives and sometimes we handle it the right way. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes we do not handle uh, stress the right way. And so uh, hopefully this lesson, these lessons have been a help and a blessing to you. Today we're going to talk about a very, very important uh, stress that we deal with and that stress is hurt. When we are hurt, it involves a lot of stress. Of course, uh, physical hurt, uh, it can involve so much stress that we actually go into shock. And there's also uh, emotional hurt, spiritual hurt, different things like that, which can also cause us to go into what we might call an emotional shock or a spiritual uh, shock. And it's not good. So how do we overcome hurt? How do we deal with the stress of hurt in our lives? Of course, uh, through, with this series of lessons, we've been looking and focusing on the shepherd, uh, Psalm 23, how Jesus will help us uh, overcome these different stresses uh, in our lives. Today, we're going to focus on verse number five, but we're going to read uh, the first several verses again, just to refresh our memories. I think a lot of you probably have this memorized, but the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Today, we're going to focus on verse number five. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. So the shepherd helps the sheep with some, some things here. Of course, we see it in verse five. Uh, the shepherd prepares a table uh, before the sheep in the presence of of his enemies. And so we face enemies. Uh, sometimes we're hurt uh, by enemies. Uh, sometimes we're hurt by friends and loved ones. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, we get hurt. But the shepherd, he prepares a table uh, before me in the presence of mine enemies. In the midst of my hurt, he anoints our head uh, with oil, which is very significant. And then I think uh, my cup runs over is important to realize that it's not all bad. Uh, and so when we go through hurt, we have a tendency just to focus on that. Someone once said, when we are in a pit, all we see is dirt when we look around when we're in that pit. So we have to get out of that pit, um, get out of that situation mentally, and then we can see some things other than just uh, dirt. So how do we handle, uh, how do we handle dirt, I was gonna say? How do we handle uh, hurt? You know, um, there's some ways that we should not handle uh, hurt, and there's some ways biblically that we should handle hurt. And so that's what we're going to talk about. That's what the lesson focuses on today. Uh, the first thing we shouldn't do with hurt is ignore it. You know, I do not want to uh, just ignore uh, hurt in my body. Why? Because if your body hurts, your body's telling you something. You know, my son was playing basketball yesterday. He sent me a picture of his finger. And uh, man, it didn't look good. It was all swollen. Uh, he could have just ignored it. But, you know, this morning he decided to go uh, to the doctor, the hospital, have it x-rayed, have it checked out. And it, indeed, it is broken. And there could be some other damage there. And so pray for my son, Ryan, if you would. Uh, but anyways, he could just ignore that, you know. I've talked to people over the years and they say, look at this uh, finger, uh, look at this, it's crooked, it didn't heal right. Why? Because I ignored I ignored it. I thought, well, it's 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 going to go away or whatever. And so we, we should not ignore uh, hurt, you know. Uh, we should not deny it. We should not uh, delay it. We should uh, deal with it right away. Why? Because that... Uh, hurt can lead to bitterness, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But And so we don't want to deny it. We don't want to delay it, delay dealing with it. We certainly don't want to minimize it because, you know, sometimes 
we try to be strong and we say, well, it's no big deal when we know deep down it is a big deal, you know. Oh, it's only a flesh wound, you know, and you're, and you're bleeding profusely. Uh, no, you're trying to minimize it. And so that's not good. I mean, mind you, we shouldn't try to make mountains out of molehills either, but we're talking about hurt here and we're talking about dealing with hurt. So we do not want uh, to ignore it. You know, um, it can take a change, a minor situation into a, into a major situation. And, and I've had people tell me in regard to their health over the years, boy, if I would have just taken care of this, it would have been minor, you know, just like dental issues, automobile issues, whatever. I wish I would have not, I shouldn't have ignored that uh, because now I'm dealing with a major issue when it could have been a minor uh, issue. And so Psalm 39 verse number two refers uh, to this when we do not deal with things. And it says, I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good. And listen to this, and my sorrow was stirred up. So, you know, we, we ignore it and we deny it, we delay it, we minimize it, and it's going to fester, it's going to stir up. So don't ignore, uh, hurt. Uh, another thing we do that we shouldn't do when we're hurt is we run from it. You know, maybe we get hurt uh, by someone on the job. We quit that job. We run or we get hurt at church. So we quit that church and we go to a different one. We get hurt there and we quit that one and go to a different one. Or spouse hurts us in some way. So we quit that marriage or that relationship, move on to another one. And friends, uh, same thing. Uh, we get hurt. And so we have a tendency, human nature is a tendency uh, to run when we feel pain. Uh, Psalm 55 refers to this, and it's a powerful scripture about this. Psalm 55, uh, verse 6, it says, So I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Selah, I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. And boy, so many times in my life, I felt like running, <laughs> escaping, you know. Um, you get hurt, uh, like I said, whether it's a job, uh, whether it's church, whether it's uh, a relationship, you just want to run. And so we have to be careful about that. That's what the psalmist said. Oh, that I had wings like a dove. Have you ever been there? You feel like, man, I wish I could just fly away. I wish I could just... Uh, run away, but that's not the answer. And we know that deep down, you know, so sometimes, unfortunately, we run from trouble to trouble in escaping hurt. Sometimes we uh, run to uh, whether it be entertainment, whether it be uh, promiscuity, whether it be uh, alcohol, drugs, uh, different things. And we run to that. And of course, the devil would use those things to make our pain even worse. And so, we're pretty good at running from our pain. We're pretty good at ignoring our pain. Uh, we're pretty good at camouflaging our pain. And we shouldn't do that, which brings us to the next part is hiding it, which kind of goes along with what we've been talking about. You camouflage it. You just, you just hide it. And some of this is pride. Uh, you just don't want to admit that you are hurt. You don't want to uh, deal with it. And so we have to be careful about that. You know, it's like we talk about addiction. You know, you have to admit you have a problem before you can get help. Before you can get saved, you have to admit that you're a sinner on your way to hell. And, you know, before we get healing from hurt, we have to, first of all, admit uh, that we are uh, hurt. Um, you know, James 5 talks about that in a roundabout way. It says, confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And so uh, we should talk to, to people, uh, not in a gossipy way, but talk about our hurt, especially in a safe environment. Now, you have to be careful who you talk to about your hurt before you know it. Before you know it could be uh, just broadcast everywhere if you talk to the wrong people about your hurt. So we have uh, friends, we have family, we have pastors, we have people in our lives that uh, we feel safe with. And it's good to talk about these things and not try to 
uh, hide it. So realize this, everybody has hurt, you know, uh, you're not alone. I'm not alone. And so uh, don't try to hide it. Here's another thing that we do with hurt that's not helpful is we just fret about it. Um, we worry. The Bible says, God says in Psalms, fret not because of evildoers, uh, because of, of people that have hurt you and things like that and, and people that are doing uh, hurtful things and wrong things. Uh, we should not worry about that. Why? Realize this. God is in control. Um, so we shouldn't worry. Worry is an attempt to control the uncontrollable. You know, I can't control how people treat me. I cannot control everything that happens to me. And so what do I do? I realize, well, I cannot control the uncontrollable. And so I give it to God. And I know sometimes that seems just so elementary. And sometimes we feel like when we're in that pit that, oh, it doesn't work. What's God going to do anyways? Um, so I need to take this upon myself. No, Jesus said to what? To cast your care upon me. First Peter 5, 7, cast all your care. That talking about worry, cast that on me. Why? Because I care about you. And Jesus said, Matthew 10, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden and take my yoke upon you. And uh, and that's what we need uh, to do. And so uh, Paul said in Philippians chapter six, uh, Philippians chapter four, verse six, be anxious for nothing. Right. And that's talking about worry. Uh, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And I love verse 7, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ. And so don't worry over it. And then finally, don't be bitter. And I touched on that uh, earlier. If we don't take care of hurt properly, it'll cause us to become angry. It'll cause us to become bitter. You know, Ephesians 4 tells us to be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. In other words, don't let this fester day after day after day. You know, before you go to bed at night, just put it all in the hands of the Lord, you know. And and that's so important that we do that. Why? Because we don't want to become uh, bitter. Bitterness never makes us better, right? And so if we don't deal with our hurts properly, we're going to become very bitter. I must admit, there's been times in my life where I've become bitter at people. And so I realize this, it never does help a situation. It only makes things worse. And, you know, bitterness doesn't hurt the other person. You've heard this said before, and it's so true. Uh, bitterness hurts you more than it does the person that you're bitter about. And so bitterness hurts us. And so we have to be careful. It's actually a poison that will just slowly kill us over a period of time. That's why God says, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Why? Because when we get bitter, we get filled with wrath, anger, clamor, and we want to talk about it all the time. And uh, and And so, you know, I've been there. So you have to realize after a while, you know what? I need to put this behind me. Paul said, uh, looking forward, forgetting those things which are behind. And boy, I've been guilty about that in the past. And I'm not perfect right now, right? So I'm preaching to myself, teaching to myself not as well. And, and so, boy, quit quit picking at that scab. Quit talking about it all the time. Why do we do that? Because we're bitter, we're hurt. And so we need to allow God to take that bitterness from us, and that what it, that's what Ephesians four thirty one's about. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you. Hey, I didn't say it was easy to put it away from you. God doesn't say that it's easy, and God says this. And then the very next verse, verse thirty two, I love it. And be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. You know, when I have a bitterness, when I have bitterness in my heart, I'm not going to be kind to people. I'm not going to be tender hearted. I'm not going to be forgiving. forgiving. All those things, and we know, we know uh, that that is true. So 
Uh, how do we handle bitterness? Well, not by ignoring it, not by running from it, hiding from it, worrying over it, becoming bitter about it. So you say, how do you do it then? How do you deal with uh, uh, being hurt? How do you deal with hurt uh, biblically? I'm glad you asked. Well, focus on God. Focus on the shepherd. I've been talking about that every week, uh, what, these different subjects. Um, in verse number five, you. Notice it says you, thou, right? Thou preparest a table. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. So, so you is found twice and it's referring to God. God prepares a table before us, even in the presence of our enemies. What's that mean? That means God is in control of every situation. God can take care of you in every situation. And of course, he anoints us with oil. Very, very important. And we're going to talk about this in a bit here. But first of all, let your shepherd protect you. God, even in the midst of enemies, can protect you and, and provide for you. And so, what do I do when I'm overcome with feelings of, of, of hurt? And, and and maybe you're already to the point of bitterness. What do you do? Well, you realize that God sets a table before us, even in the presence of our enemies. So it's about trusting God with that hurt, trusting God to deal with the person or people uh, that hurt you. And so it's about le letting go and letting God. I know that's a cliche, but it's such a true, it's such a helpful cliche. And so let God, let the shepherd protect you. Let me read a couple things to you. Uh, sheep need protection, right? And only the shepherd can provide that. And so we need to realize, hey, you know what? I can't do anything about the situation in, in most cases. And we can talk about it, gripe about it, uh, get angry about it, all those things. But really, it's not going to fix any of it. We just need to go to the shepherd, right? And take it to him. And so sheep are very defenseless. And so we need to go to God. God says, let me handle those that have hurt you. Let me make it straight. Now, I'm not going to get into Matthew 18. Now, Matthew 18 does give us a formula, if you will, principles, if you will, how to deal with hurt. You want you go to that person, right? And then you take a witness to that person. And so there are some biblical ways to, 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 to deal with hurt. That's not the purpose of this lesson, however, today. But it's not a bad thing to do. As a matter of fact, we should do that if people wrong you and uh, you follow Matthew 18. It's very, very helpful. Uh, but realize this, God will help you. Let God protect you. Let God straighten that person out. I've realized many, many years in the ministry now, uh, almost 40, you know, I'm not going to straighten anybody out. I've tried to do it before. It's not going to happen. It might happen for a short period of time. Uh, but a dog returns to his own vomit, like the Bible says. So God has to do something in that person's person's heart. I'm not going to straighten him out. You're not going to straighten him out. So let Jesus take care of it. Let Jesus protect you. Let him take care of your enemies. Let him provide a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And let God deal with it. Romans chapter 12, you've heard this before. Repay no one for for evil for evil right? Have regard for good things in the sight of all men, if it be possible. As much as lies in you or depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Brethren, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give grace, uh, place to wrath and grace, uh, place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. So part of having faith in God is trusting that he will protect you even from your enemies. So let Jesus protect you. Let Jesus heal you. This is so important. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Now listen to this. You anoint my head with oil. Let Jesus heal you, the balm of Gilead. Let Jesus heal you, the great physician, that great shepherd, the good shepherd, and so what does the shepherd do? Well, the shepherd, the sheep have a hurt, right? We're talking physically now. They take that oil and what do they do? 
they anoint the, the sheep's head with oil. You know what sheep deal with on a constant basis out on the pasture? They deal with uh, biting flies. And those flies will bite the ears of those sheep and bite the face of that sheep. And that sheep has no defense against it. And then, you know what, uh, the blood is drawn and, and, and a wound develops. And boy, it attracts even more flies. And it just compounds and it gets worse and worse and worse. So you know what that shepherd does? He anoints my head with oil. Uh, and what does it do? Well, it heals, right? The shepherd would take that oil, mix a little sulfur in with it, and put it on the head of that sheep, and it would act as an insect repellent to keep those uh, biting flies away. So let Jesus deal with those biting flies. How does he do it? By anointing your head with oil. And uh, that's what he does. And so it acts as an ointment for healing as well, not only as a repellent uh, to keep the flies at bay, but also those wounds from the bites of those flies it will begin to heal. Now, you know, when we're hurt, sometimes we have healing pretty quickly, and sometimes we do not get healing for a long time. I guarantee you there's people that are going to watch this video, and you know what? You've had some hurt happen to you, and honestly, um, it, it's, it's still there. It still, it, it hasn't healed. And so we need to allow God to heal that thing. Quit picking at it. You know, sometimes we just need to get some, uh, some counsel. Sometimes, of course, we can just go to God on our own and just God will help us with that. Sometimes it's important to get counsel. I am a believer in therapy about going to somebody that you can sit down with and talk to. And sometimes our minds get in bad places. And so that counselor will help you out of that pit where all you see is dirt and help you get back on your feet again. It's very important uh, that we do that. But anyways, uh, let Jesus heal that hurt once and for all. Quit picking the scab off. Get that balm of Gilead like the Bible talks about. Get that oil. Now anoint us my head with oil. We need to be soothed. We need to be uh, healed, right? And, that, and so many scriptures about healing. I'm going to read one to you. Psalm 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Think about that. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. That sounds to me like a promise of God. So let the shepherd protect you from hurt. Let the shepherd heal your hurts. Let me read this to you. Uh, I posted on Facebook a bit ago. You have a choice when you look at those scars. You know, we have scars from previous hurts. Literally on our bodies, we will have scars, physical scars from physical hurts. But we also have emotional scars. We have emotional uh, hurts. And so what do we do? Well, we can look at those scars and we can remember the anguish. We can remember the situation. Or we can look at that scar and say, thank you, Jesus. Uh it's healed now. And so you can have a choice. You have a choice when you look at those scars uh, of hurt. You can either look at the scars and remember the hurt and focus on, that, focus on that hurt and feel the pain all over again. Or you can look at the scars and remember the healing. Hey, it's in the past and it's healed. I don't have to reopen it. I don't have to dig at it and scrape at it. No, uh, it's healed. Praise the Lord for that. And then finally, let Jesus direct your thoughts. And this is so important. Um, you prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Now listen to this. My cup runs over. Wow. Why is that thrown in there? Well, I realize this. In spite of the hurt, in spite of the pain, in spite of the things that have happened to us, we have a shepherd. And guess what? Overall, it's good. What do we say? God is good. What? I can almost hear you saying it all the time. God is good all the time. Remember, friend, my cup runs over. I, I don't want to be defined by that hurt. I don't want to be defined by that injury. I don't want to be defined by those scars. I want to be defined by, hey, 
there is a person whose cup is running over. They're experiencing the blessings of God. So in spite of your hurt, realize this. God prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. God will anoint our head with oil. He will allow the soothing that we need, the healing that we need. And realize this, it's not all bad, folks. There's a lot of good. Guess what? In spite of these situations that have happened to us, my cup runs over. So let the shepherd redirect your thoughts. Don't focus on the hurt. Focus on the blessing. Focus on, hey, guess what? Yes, I've been through some bad things. I have some scars. I have some hurt. But in spite of that, my cup runs over and God has done some wonderful things for us. So what do we do? We keep looking up. That's what God tells us to do. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so um, I hope this is a help to you. I could go on and on about it. But how we handle a hurt, how we handle hurt is a very, very serious thing. If we do not handle it properly, we will miss out on so much that God has for us. If we do not handle it properly, we will just live a life of brokenness, uh, of open wounds. And that's not how God wants us to live our lives. He wants us to live our lives with the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And so remember that. I hope it was a help to you, and I hope to see you on Zoom. I've been missing on Zoom for 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 weeks, it just every Thursday night, um, you know. But anyways, God willing, I'll be back tomorrow uh, on Zoom. Hope to see you Sunday. God's been sending so many wonderful new people to, to Lighthouse, um, and then I we've been missing a lot of people too. Summer is a time of vacations, and that's great to get refreshed, to get away for a while. And so I'm looking forward to school starting. I'm looking forward to the fall just to get everybody back and just see what God can do at Lighthouse uh, this fall. God bless. Have a great day.